Hello everybody. Welcome to Word Shard. I am here again for you with Merchant of Venice Act 2 Scene 9. Before moving to Act 2 Scene 9, in Act 2 Scene 8, we had a question that who was the person who had informed Salarino about the shipwreck? Tanisha Kartikian has answered it correctly that uh, yes, the French man was the one who had informed Salarino about the shipwreck and as the ship was so costly looking, it was richly fraught, richly laden, therefore people thought that it must be Antonio's because Antonio was a rich merchant of Venice. Now, we will move to scene 9. You finish the you finish understanding the whole thing, you listen to the whole audio, understand the full thing clear your doubts and then you come back to this part where I am asking the question from scene 9 itself. Remember this question, finish watching the video and then you answer in the end. The question for this part, from this part is, what were the three promises that the suitors had to make before selecting the caskets? So what were the three promises that the suitors, suitors means those people who came to select or, or choose the casket what were the three promises they had to make before going and choosing the casket you have to mention the three promises okay this is the question from scene 9 first you finish watching the video it is scene 9 itself so you watch the video in the end you answer this question it is there explained in the video itself okay so let's start with the scene so today we will start with the merchant of venice act 2 scene 9 it is in Belmont, which is the place where Portia lives. It is in Portia's house itself. This is another scene where we will find a suitor choosing a particular casket. There were three caskets or three boxes, a gold one, silver one and one was lead casket. So again a suitor has come. The previous one was Morocco, Prince of Morocco. He, he chose the gold casket. Now here we have another suitor who has come here to choose. Let's see who he is and what he chooses. Enter Nerissa with a servitor. Nerissa, quick, quick, I pray thee. So the suitor has already come in and therefore Nerissa quickly comes in and orders the servant to draw the curtain straight, to remove the curtains or to pull, over the, pull the curtains down so that the Prince of Aragon hath taken his oath. So already he has taken his oath. What oath? They had to promise in front of God that they would follow whatever the clause was that is they would not marry if they choose incorrectly then they would go away from this place immediately if they have chosen incorrectly there were certain things that they had to promise first and then go to choose remember this oath the first six suitors did not want to take they did not want to swear that they would not marry if they were unable to choose the correct casket and so they went away without choosing it. Okay, but Prince of Morocco took the oath. Prince of Aragon has also promised and has now come to this place to choose the casket and comes to his election presently. That means Aragon has already taken his oath, has already promised in front of God and now he is presently. That means at the present moment, he is here to choose. So you have already seen this picture. This is the these were the curtains that had to be moved out so that the caskets which were behind this could be seen. So Morocco, sorry, Aragon comes here to choose. Flourish of cornets enter the Prince of Aragon, Portia, and their trains. So now all of them enters Portia. Behold, there stand the caskets. So Portia shows the caskets to Prince of Aragon. Portia shows that look here are the three caskets. If you choose that wherein I am contained, that means if you can point out that particular casket where my portrait is, inside that inside one of the boxes there was Portia's picture. So if you can identify which box it was, straight shall our nuptial rights. What do you mean by nuptial rights? It means then we will immediately go for our marriage ceremony, be solemnized. That means immediately if you choose the correct casket, I will marry you. But if you fail, in case you win, I will marry you. Okay, but if you fail, 
without more speech my lord you must be gone from hence immediately so this is the rule that you need to follow if you choose the incorrect casket then you will immediately go away from here aragon i am enjoined that means i am bound by oath this is the promise that he had made to god to observe three things so three rules were there first rule was never to unfold this is important okay remember what were the rules that needed to be followed first never to unfold to anyone which casket it was i chose number one is once you have chosen the casket you already know whether it is in that casket or not so you will not go and tell it to anybody that which casket you chose this was the first one that whoever wanted to choose the casket first he had to promise that he is not going to tell anybody which casket he has chosen okay then next one is if i fail of the right casket never in my life to woo a maid in way of marriage what is this woo a maid in way of marriage sometimes when you fall in love the boy proposes the girl or the girl proposes the boy so in this case if the person if that man is unable to choose the correct casket then he is not going to try to win somebody's love he is never going to win anybody's love and never going to marry okay last one what is it if i do fail in fortune of my choice immediately to leave you and be gone so if you if i fail to choose the correct casket then immediately i will leave this place and go away from here so three things portia to these injunctions everyone so once more i'll repeat what were the three promises that he had to make number one if he after he chooses the casket he is not going to tell anybody which casket he chose number 2 if he chooses the incorrect casket then he is not going to propose somebody for marriage or love anybody any girl again and number 3 if he fails to choose the correct casket then he will immediately have to leave the place and go away portia to these injunctions every one doth swear that comes to hazard for my worthless self so portia says that yes these are the conditions that every suitor whoever comes to choose the casket has to make these promises first only then he can choose the casket it is not you it is not prince of aragon that i am telling you that you will have to follow these rules anybody who comes to choose the casket has to follow this aragon and so have i addressed me and so i have prepared myself for it fortune now to my heart's hope so may god be with me may i be fortunate may i choose the correct casket so what are the caskets let me see they are gold silver and base lead so there are three caskets gold silver and base lead who chooseth me must give an hazard all he hath this you already have learnt once because morocco also reads them it was written in which casket it was written in the lead casket you shall look fairer air means before i give or hazard so again aragon makes the same mistake he says that lead casket you are so dull looking you look so dull you see this picture this is so dull it is such a dull color okay so i cannot choose i cannot risk anything for your sake it is written that you have to give and hazard everything for me so for lead casket for something which looks so dull not at all beautiful i am not going to risk anything now so he cancels the lead casket completely now what says the golden chest ha huh, let me see so let's read what is written on the golden chest who chest means again the casket or the box who chooseth me shall gain what many men desire you have read this already it was written on the gold casket what many men desire now he starts thinking so many people desire this okay so many is the hint many may be meant by the fool multitude so this aragon is a bit cleverer than morocco he understands that here many is the is the catch word that means a person or or many particularly this word means a huge number of foolish people who cannot identify right from wrong cannot understand what lies within what lies inside they just see the outside glow of it outside beauty of it and they choose it 
there are huge number of people who are foolish enough to choose this because they choose by show by the out by the external appearance by the outside looking just at the outside of it the outside coating of it they feel that this is good or this is bad for example if you go to the market and you buy a very you find a shiny apple and one dull looking apple so there are a huge number of people who will buy that shiny apple but once you buy it and bring it back home you find that the apple has a worm inside it has an insect inside it it is not good so there are a, there are a huge number of foolish people who make this mistake they just look they just take the thing from the external appearance they find it beautiful they bring it home and the inside is not good of it okay so i am not that kind of a foolish man not learning more than the fond eye doth teach so they just take the help of the eye they just see it okay this looks nice so let me bring it home but actually that is not the right thing to do which prize not that means these people does not see what is in the inside or does not judge that what the inside can be will i take this apple it it is looking shiny but will the inside of the apple be good or will it be infected they do not see but like the martlet martlet is a bird okay now this is a small story the martlet is a bird which makes its home on the outward wall okay you see this bird these are the little ones of the martlet bird so they make their nests at the outside of the wall not the inside but the outside now they are stupid isn't it because any time there is a storm or <clears throat> excuse me any time there is a storm or rain or anything their homes will be disturbed their homes may break and fall okay so just like these martlet they do not they do not make their homes in the inside but on the outside wall there are a huge number of foolish people who just are fascinated by the outside of things and they bring it and they find that they are foolish okay just like morocco he was satisfied that okay gold that this is so costly from the outside let me choose it and then he found that it was the wrong choice i will not choose what many men desire so i am not going to choose what many foolish people do because i will not jump with common spirits because i am not as foolish as the common people and rank me with the barbarous multitude multitude so multitude means a huge number of stupid people i don't find myself as stupid as those people okay so why then to the the silver treasure house so i am not going to choose the golden casket also now what remains there is the treasure house silver treasure house which means the silver casket tell me once more what title thou dost bear so let me read what is written on it who chooseth me shall get as much as he deserves and well said to for who shall go about to cause and fortune and be honorable without the stamp of merit now this part is important listen carefully see we always try to we always feel that it is good if somebody who is meritorious who studies a lot stands first in class isn't it it is always correct if it is so a person who is studying a lot a person who is preparing his or her lessons a lot he should he or she should stand first in class isn't it he deserves to stand first in class she deserves to stand first in class so that is the same thing that that uh, aragon tells he says that who shall go about to cozen cozen means cheat fortune and be honorable without the stamp of merit anybody who who has the stamp of merit anybody who is meritorious must be fortunate enough to get the prize isn't it anybody who is meritorious anybody who studies a lot must be must deserve the award isn't it so let none presume to wear an undeserved dignity so it is it would be bad if somebody who does not deserve to stand first somebody who does not study at all he should not stand first then it would be an undeserved dignity then it would be something not good enough because it would be bad that a person who does not deserve that award does not deserve to stand first in class throughout the year he has not studied anything properly and he goes and stands first in class that would be bad so nobody wants that now oh that estates degrees 
so he says that estates that means social ranks in which position you are degrees that means what honor you have what are the posts that you are uh, getting and offices that means what job you have got or where you are appointed were not derived corruptly so he says that it is always acceptable if we do not corruptly get something for example i do not deserve to be uh, first in class but i get it maybe because uh, one of my uh, you know one of my relative is in a very good position and these things so what happens is these are not desired these are corrupt ways to be to be to stand first in class or to get a good job okay it is always acceptable if without corruptly we get that job and that clear honor clear honor means unblemished honor that means when i deserve it i get it where purchased by the merit of the wearer that means if i have the merit to get that job if i have the merit to stand first in class only then i should get it that is the most desirable how many then should cover that stand bare so now what happens mostly what happens is we often see that somebody who does not deserve he gets it he gets that position he gets that job or he gets that award by incorrect ways by incorrect means or in a corrupt manner okay so he says that if the person who deserves it gets it then what would happen how many then should cover that stand bare that means this one is a uh, is a kind of custom that whenever you are a supi for example uh, a servant and a lord and his master is standing so um, the master is superior to him is better than him in rank and the servant is inferior to him so the servant will not wear the cap on his head in front of his master the master will wear the cap because he is a superior person he is of a superior rank and the and the servant will not wear the cap in front of his master that is a kind of respect which is shown so how many then should cover that stand bare so there are a huge number of people who deserve certain things but do not get it so we find many people who happen to be superior than the others but in reality they are not superior okay how many be commanded that command so there are a huge number of people who are capable enough who deserve a better position but in reality they do not get it somebody else who has got the position in a corrupt way commands those people who do not deserve to command how much low peasantry would then be gleaned from the true seed of honor if somebody who deserves get that position that what will happen then we will see low peasantry see there were two classes one was the higher class where the noble people used to belong and number two was the peasant class that means the people who used to cultivate the farmers cultivators of soil those were the peasants so there were the two classes now you see if honor if proper honor was given to the deserving people then what would happen then many people who are now peasants who are now the lower class people they would get the position of the higher class people in reality there are so many corrupt means that are used that if proper honor was given to the deserving people we would see everything changing from its place the one who used to stand first in class would be identified to be very um, dull in the class and should be the last one of the class understood it would be changing the position if the person who deserves the thing gets it normally it does not happen so that would be the case and how much honor picked from the chaff and ruin of times to be new varnished now what would happen if things change in that way if things change from the first position to the last and the person in the last comes in the front if the higher class people's qualities are judged properly we will see that they happen to be best suited as the lower class people okay and vice versa then what would happen picked from the chaff and ruin of times okay if if you know what is chaff when you collect these rice and the husk this part is the chaff and this part is the uh, grain so picked from the chaff and ruin of times that means those who are ignored always 
we will find that they are the people who deserve the best many a times what happens is people who deserve the best do not get it do not get the right position so those people are always ignored okay so if proper honor was given to them if proper judgment was done then you would see that common people who were always ignored would shine with nobility they would have the qualities of a noble person of the higher class person well but to my choice who chooseth me shall get as much as he deserves so now i am choosing the silver casket i assume i will assume desert i will assume desert means i am assured that i deserve portia nobody else is as deserving as i am so i deserve portia so give me the key for this and instantly unlock my fortune so unlock my fortunes let me see what i have won now he opens the silver casket portia too long a pause for that which you find here so portia says that you have wasted a lot of time too long a pause you have wasted a lot of time but what do you find here you find a portrait of a blinking idiot what's here the portrait of a blinking idiot that means the portrait of a fool with big eyes just like this the uh, a joker with big eyes now this is inside the casket the silver casket presenting me a schedule so what is a schedule schedule you know it is a scroll it is this scroll that you have already seen in the last video so in a scroll what happens well, it certain lines are written in it okay and it is a rolled paper i will read it so there is this picture of a blinking idiot as well as that scroll what is written over here how much unlike art thou to portia now this aragon only goes on saying that my goodness i expected that the that the portrait of portia would be here and i now found what a joker how much unlike my hopes and my deserving so what i hoped what i thought i deserved and now see what i have got who chooseth me shall have as much as he deserves did i deserve no more than a fool said now he goes on questioning himself that do i not deserve portia is it that i do not deserve portia and i deserve this stupid person this stupid joker is that my prize are my deserts deserts means are my deservings no better do i deserve nothing other than this stupid head portia to offend and judge are distinct offices and of opposed natures so some portia says portia is very clever you will understand this when you go to act for scene one you will see how much clever intelligent experienced she is so portia says see you have made a wrong choice and you are now unable to understand why and what was your fault and what was your mistake and why you chose the incorrect casket what is here now he reads the scroll see the fire seven times tried this so the fire refines you know the silver is made by the in the furnace so he says that the fire seven times have tried the casket seven times tried the judgment is so the judgment is also tested seven times that did never choose anis so what does this whole thing means this means that you see portia's father was very wise he has planned a casket choice in such a way that a person who reads the line on top of the casket and understands it properly logically in an experienced way he would be the right person for portia to marry he would keep portia the happiest after marriage so this casket choice this plan this lottery this casket choice is arranged with in such a manner that whoever is the correct person he is going to choose the correct casket okay now some there be that shadows kiss now he goes on now the scroll goes on saying that there are a few people who do not understand the real happiness from the fake happiness okay they cannot understand which one is the real happiness for example i'll give you a very easy example see you have an exam before the class 10 boards isn't it there is a selection or pre final that you have the last exam of your school in in class 10 after that you give the boards exam so for example in your selection or pre final you get uh, 89 out of 100 and you are extremely happy that my goodness i have done so good and you stop studying then you are happy with what with the shadow you did not get the real happiness real happiness is what when you get good marks in boards isn't it so that is a time when 
you kiss the shadow you kiss the shadow of happiness you did not reach the reason for real happiness you're just happy seeing the shadow of happiness isn't it so such have but a shadows miss so if you are happy with the shadow then you will be happy with the shadow itself you will not get the real happiness if you stop studying at the pre after the pre final or after the selection then what will happen you will not get good marks in the boards if you stop studying before that and then you will have to be happy only with the shadow real happiness though you will not get them there be fools alive so there are a few fools who i wish i wish means i know silvered over that means there are a few people who have silver hair what does silver hair signify it signifies that as you grow old you gain a number of experiences with the experiences you become clever more clever than you were so although these people have silver hair have white hair <clears throat> they have not grown wiser okay they have silver hair but they are not wise enough and so was this in the same way the silver casket is silver in color white in color but this deceives this is not the correct casket i will ever be your head so therefore i that means the joker i will always be a, the foolish head okay just like you you have you deserve me because you are a fool to choose the silver casket that is why you have got a fool's head a joker so be gone so go away from here <clears throat> you are sped you, your work over here is complete you are not going to marry osia so go away immediately now up to this the scroll ends so what was written in the scroll once more i'll say first part first line would be that this casket choice is planned in a very wise manner okay it is tested by the fire seven times and whoever chooses the right casket is obviously the correct person for portia to marry next next is a person who is satisfied with the shadow and is happy by getting the shadow will only feel the shadow of joy i know that there are a few people who have silver hair but are not wise enough similarly this casket is also whitish in color but is deceiving you so i will ever therefore you have got this fool's head because you deserve this fool's head as you could not identify the right casket so you should go away from here immediately done this part is whatever was written in the uh, silver uh, written in the silver casket in the scroll inside the silver casket so first question is why didn't he choose the lead casket because it was not beautiful enough it was dull looking okay so he would not risk anything for it same as morocco said number 2 why didn't he choose the gold casket because he was clever to understand that all that glitters is not gold everything that shines may not be good from the inside that is why he did not choose like a huge number of people quite like prince of morocco as morocco did he did not make that fault make that uh, error and why did he choose the silver casket because he thought that he deserves portia anybody who deserves a particular thing must get it so he feels that obviously i deserve portia uh, and therefore i should get her and then he chose the silver casket okay so all the important questions over here i have discussed let's move to the next part portia thus had the candle singed the moth now there is also another story you have perhaps i think you have seen this you will see a moth okay near the flame near the fire what does what do they do near the fire they move about the fire about that flame of the fire and then what happens is they burn themselves down okay they are foolish these these moths these butterflies are foolish to burn themselves down by moving near the flame of the fire oh these deliberate fools now like that butterfly these people are also very very foolish when they do choose they have the wisdom by their wit to lose these people are foolish because the way they are reasoning the 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 way they are planning that okay in this casket her portrait might be in that casket the portrait might be they do not have that capability to think properly they do not have that capability to reason themselves they are foolish they are very very foolish so therefore they are choosing the wrong casket 
they do not understand that you have come here for love you have come here to marry somebody you should not think uh, about profit over here you should not think whether you deserve or not deserve isn't it what you should think is you should give whatever you have you have come here for love so when over a casket it is written that you need to risk and hazard everything you have obviously inside that the portrait will be because you come here for love when you love somebody you give everything selflessly isn't it that is why the portrait must be inside the lead casket and these people morocco aragon they do not have the capability to understand such a simple thing now nerissa the ancient saying is no hearsay that means the ancient saying the, the whatever was said in the past it is not a false thing what the, what did it say hanging and wiving goes by destiny so you know in in a bengali there is a saying that uh, when you whom you marry when you die when you are born these three things are decided beforehand okay so in the same way this is your destiny the person who is going to marry you is already chosen by the gods okay so you don't need to worry come draw the curtain nerissa so again pull over the curtain we will leave from here enter a servant now a servant comes in this part is also very interesting servant where is my lady the servant asks for portia where is she here what would my lord yes what do you want servant madam there is a lighted at your gate that means there is a person who has come at your gate who is that person a young venetian that means of a, a person from venice one that comes before to signify the approaching of his lord who is this this one is a messenger he has come here before his lord has arrived to inform that his lord is coming from whom he bringeth sensible regret sensible regret means he has not brought greetings but he has also brought a huge number of gifts with him the messenger has brought a huge number of gifts to wit that means which means besides commands commends and courteous breath that means he has not only brought compliments he is not only bringing greetings or compliments for portia he has also brought gifts of rich value huge number of gifts he has brought with him yet i have not seen so likely that means so beautifully dressed a messenger an ambassador of love i have never seen somebody who a, a messenger who is as as stately or as nicely dressed as this one a day in april never came so sweet to show how costly summer was at hand now this part you need to understand see in the western countries you will see there are four seasons uh, they are divide they divide the seasons in four parts first one is spring then summer then autumn then winter so spring is the time just after winter when you find that all the leaves the small small leaves start growing on the trees then in summer fruits come fruits and flowers come then in autumn again the leaves start falling and then in winter you find all the leaves of the trees have fallen so this this cycle goes on and on so now april is the time of spring so this one is compared to the this thing is compared to the the messenger is compared to the spring season who is a messenger who comes before summer so if the spring is so beautiful if so nice little leaves are coming then the summer would be very nice many fruits and flowers would come in the same way if the messenger is so beautifully dressed and brings so many gifts then obviously the person is going to the the lord is having to bring is going to bring a huge number of gifts has to be a very gentleman kind of a person as this four sporer four sporer means as this messenger comes before his lord this lord this messenger has come before his lord and has brought so many gifts so i cannot even imagine that when the lord will come he will bring so many many and many gifts portia no more i pray thee I am half afeard thou wilt see anon he is some kin to thee so now portia tries to make fun of it portia says that the way you are you are praising this person this messenger i am half afeard i'm afraid that soon you will say that this person this messenger is some kind of a relative of yours kin means relative 
thou spendest such high day with you are saying so many good words about him you are crazy praising him come come nerissa for i long to see quick cupid's post that quick cupid means the classical god of love so i want to see who is this messenger whose messenger is he, he this person i want to see that who is coming who is the lord that comes so mannerly now the messenger is so mannerly coming so beautifully dressed and coming in a such in such a stately manner i guess who this cupid is going to be who this lover is going to be the suitor nerissa besanio lord love if thy will if thy will it be so now this person is coming from venice the messenger is venetian so the lord must also be from venice so now nerissa starts thinking is it besanio and nerissa wants that if besanio comes and if besanio chooses the right casket then portia would be very happy okay because portia already has a liking for besanio now this part act 2 scene 9 ends and we finish act 2 completely in the next video we will start act 3 and uh, for class 9s you have only till act 3 scene 1 and that part i'll complete and then we'll move on to questions and the uh, and the scenes act 2 uh, sorry act 3 scene 2 and the other ones till act 4 okay so i hope this part is clear if it is not clear this is a a bit um, not i will not say difficult but it is a bit tricky it has a number of tricky words and explanations if you find it difficult you can ask in the comment section and if i see that there are a huge number of uh, problems then i will obviously take another video to sort your problems okay the questions and if you have liked it uh, you can click the like button and also subscribe thank you